An update tonight to San Diego County's public health order. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. Here are tonight's top stories. Beginning midnight Monday, all bank and public transportation workers will be required to wear masks. And that includes bus drivers, trolley operators, along with taxi and rideshare drivers. The county also announced 98 new positive coronavirus cases today, bringing the total to 1,628. They also announced four more deaths. That brings the total to 40. A sailor on board the USS Roosevelt is in the intensive care unit tonight after testing positive for coronavirus. The Navy says the sailor was in isolation when he was found unresponsive at the naval base in Guam and was transferred to the hospital. News 8's Kelly Hesedal has the latest on this case, as well as what officials at Naval Base San Diego are doing to make sure the stay sailors there stay safe. While the sailor tested positive for coronavirus more than a week ago, he was in isolation and it was during a routine welfare check he was found unresponsive. Sadly, this morning we had our first hospitalization of the of the one sailor. Uh, you, you know, I guess deep down I was hoping that we would never get to the point. I was hoping that the numbers would be zero at the end of this, but uh, that, that's just not going to be the case with coronavirus. Top military officials say there are more than 400 crew members aboard the USS Roosevelt infected with COVID-19 and one in the intensive care unit. The aircraft carrier has been docked in Guam for more than a week. We're hoping that that sailor rec recovers. Uh, we're praying for him and his family and his shipmates. The ship has been at the center of controversy. The outbreak on board is tied to the dismissal of Captain Brett Crozier and then to the resignation of Acting Navy Secretary Thomas Modley. Military officials say the USS Roosevelt is unlikely to be the only deployed ship affected by coronavirus. Both the USNS Comfort in New York City and the USNS Mercy in L.A. have had at least one crew member test positive for the virus. As for the USS Nimitz. And there's been a very small number of breakouts on the Nimitz, and we're watching that very closely uh, before the Nimitz go out. But it's not, it's not a huge breakout. It's not a big spike at this point. Meanwhile, at Naval Base San Diego. Everything the CDC is recommending, and we have also implemented. Obviously, with sailors living in such qu close quarters, you know, there's always concern about people getting sick. We work in close quarters, um, so the uh, commanding officers on, on the ships, uh, uh, they're under very, uh, they have very strict guidelines on how they're, how they're dealing with this. There have been cases of COVID-19 on base, but Captain Mark Niswadami says they're still conducting training exercises and ready to respond if needed. Because the world, it was, it was, uh, it was a very uncertain place before this, and we don't know what it holds after this internationally. So um, the folks here, the sailors, take it very seriously. Meanwhile, a spokesperson with the Navy tells me a news conference with the 7th Fleet Admiral is expected to happen either tonight or possibly tomorrow. We will keep you posted. Back to you. Thanks, Kelly. San Diego County is offering a new interactive tool to get quick local information related to the coronavirus pandemic. There's a new dashboard on the county's coronavirus website with information that is updated daily from confirmed cases to zip code breakdown. The new dashboard comes at the same time as a change to the public health order. Uh, but we have amended our public health order to include uh, employees of a few additional businesses where it is a requirement uh, that the employees of those have face coverings. That includes banks and public transportation uh, employees. The revised order will take effect Monday at midnight. County leaders are still encouraging all San Diegans to wear a face covering anytime they leave the house for any reason. With a surge in COVID-19 cases expected soon, Scripps Health is issuing a plea to the public to help keep health care workers safe. As an emergency physician, I can tell you there's nothing more heartbreaking than seeing a patient struggle and fight for their life in the intensive care unit on a ventilator and sometimes there's things that we could have done to prevent all of that. The social distancing, hand washing, not coming to work or being around others when you're sick. Those are things that you can do. Don't be one of those people that look back and say, what could I have done differently? The time for action is now. I really need your help to keep us all safe. Scripps Health today also announced the launch of the fastest available test for detecting coronavirus. This rapid test can deliver a positive result in as little as five minutes and a negative result in 13 minutes. 
It's available at all five of Scripps Hospital campuses across the county, and it will be used for patients requiring a quick diagnosis. Fears are growing for San Diegans who have family members in senior care facilities right now as we're seeing an alarming rise in coronavirus cases at nursing homes all across the country. Heather Hope spoke with a member of our News Aid family concerned about his mother who was in assisted living. It's an already tense time amid this coronavirus outbreak, and those fears aren't being calmed for those with loved ones inside nursing homes filled with an already at risk and elderly population. This one's for the ages. It is. Let's give him a nice safety tip. It's been tough for Joel Maidis, lead editor at News 8, not seeing his 78-year-old mother, Eleanor. She's hanging in there. I think she kind of grasps a little bit what's going on, but not really. The hardest thing for me was it was her birthday last month, and she loves chicken, loves fried chicken, and I couldn't bring her fried chicken. I really felt bad about that. But Eleanor has been in the Acorn Oaks Manor Assisted Living Facility in San Diego for seven years. Joel says it has no coronavirus cases reported. I, but I talk to her twice a day, generally at least twice a day. She calls me to tell me what she had after lunch and what she had for dinner. It's a dire scene in Riverside. More than 80 nursing home residents were evacuated in ambulances with 39 cases of coronavirus after nurses, fearing for their own safety, refused to show up. I think their fear uh, might have led them to make a decision that might not have been the right decision for their patient. I understand both sides. Somebody needs to take care of the people, but at the same time, you do have to go home to your family members. Then across the country, in Washington State, New Jersey, Maryland, and growing in California, more than half the nursing homes in New Jersey have at least one case, three patients have died at a nursing home in Missouri, and at a home near Richmond, Virginia, 33 have died. People are terrified. People just don't know what to do. The situation has rattled Wendy Ezes, whose 90-year-old mother is in a nursing home in Southern California. I'm nervous for her getting ill, and I'm nervous in the fact that how am I supposed to help her? What is the best thing for me to do? L.A. County health officials have told families to consider moving their relatives out. I haven't seen a lot of patients and families uh, making those decisions. There have been a few that have made those decisions, and um, we support them in that. We can transport them home. Joel gives this advice. Call your mom. Call your dad. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're here for them and try to, if you can, explain to them what's going on and why you can't be there right now and uh, be there every way, every way you can. Heather Hope, News 8. We're with you there, Joel. We're thinking of you. Today, dozens of local families were given a boost thanks to a local nonprofit. Homestart helped 50 low-income families from Encanto Elementary today during a drive through event at the Jacobs Center for Neighborhood Innovation. Each of them got kits to help them weather the hard times, including gift cards, hygiene kits, and activity packs for the kids. More dismal news for U.S. workers sidelined by the coronavirus pandemic. The weekly jobs report shows more staggering losses. Nancy Chen has the latest from New York. Historic levels of unemployment continue to skyrocket across the U.S. The latest weekly jobs report shows another 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. And that follows a record 6.9 million who filed the previous week, bringing the total number of jobs lost in three weeks to 16.8 million. Economists believe that although these numbers are staggering and mind blowing, we are likely to see them continue for a few more weeks and then they should start to taper off. Harold Kaufman Gibbons is among the ranks of the newly unemployed. The Manhattan based trainer is now producing online workouts after the fitness studio where he worked shut its doors. I think all we've really bought in the last three weeks was food. Like we're just like feeder, feeding ourselves and that's basically it. He and his former co-workers have applied for unemployment benefits, often facing long wait times to submit a claim either online or by phone. This is your job now. Like if, if you're not getting through, if the website's crashing, if the phone's just like ringing and ringing and ringing, your full time job is then applying for benefits. Kaufman Gibbons is hopeful the studio will reopen and he'll be rehired, but appreciates staying home is more important right now. And there's like that sadness factor and the like, hey, what's going to happen um, financially or career wise? But but mostly I'm taking the perspective of like this is something that is necessary for the collective health of the city. In the meantime, he's staying in touch with former colleagues, trading tips for navigating unemployment and a new way of life. Nancy Chin, CBS News, New York. If you're in that tough job situation, have lost a job, we'd like to hear from you. 
Have you filed for or do you plan to file for an employment? Please let us know by going to CBS8.com or by using the News 8 app. Here are the results so far. 95% of you say no, you do not plan on filing for unemployment at this point. We will update the results a bit later in the newscast. Well, it was a cold day outside today, and we saw more rain all across the county. So when is it all going to finally end? Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis has a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene. Well, unfortunately, no time soon because we thought that the system was going to move out. Models were suggesting that as we hit the next couple of days. Now it will, but it's not until we hit the weekend and then we could see a chance for showers right behind that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite radar. So we are waiting for the bulk of that moisture to move in. It is forecast to move in later on tonight all the way through tomorrow morning. You're already starting to see heavier pockets of rainfall picking up near Fallbrook, also Oceanside, Camp Pendleton area, even some mountain snow. Now, more expansive view, Southern California is getting a lot of rain right now. That system is still over us, and it's going to continue to pump that moisture in as we go into tomorrow's forecast. So we still have to hold on to at least tonight through tomorrow, and then going into Saturday, we start to switch things up. A flood warning has been issued, and that's because we could get to the flood stage of 11.3 feet, and that would be for the San Diego River at Fashion Valley. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Back to you. Thanks, Carly. We'll see you then. A San Diego woman shares a very special send the love message when we come back. And just when you were getting used to bringing your own bags to the grocery store, it may no longer be allowed. The number of coronavirus cases in Tijuana continues to rise. I'm Brandon Lewis at the U.S.-Mexico border with what the country is doing to try to stop the spread.